Ketosis does not equal fat adaptation. Ketogenic equals fat adaptation. That the diet itself is the diet of fat adaptation. That's what being ketogenic means. Benefit of ketogenic diet, in many ways, it's more about what you're taking out than it is what you're putting in, right? So right. removing all the crap. The, the idea of carbs isn't just that carbs are bad because inherently carbs are not bad. And right. it's just something that a lot of people don't understand. We just don't need them. So they can be used and they do have a place in helping people maintain a sustainable diet. They taste good. It, and you, when we say all plants are bad, oh, yes, all carbs are plant-based. Does that mean all plants are bad? No. You want to eat some Brussels sprouts? Have some freaking Brussels sprouts. Nobody got fat eating asparagus. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's not the vegetables per se that, that are the problem. They can be for some people. Some people are super sensitive to all the anti-nutrients and other things that are in plants. But that usually, when we talk about specific obesity and things like that, it's usually not the plants necessarily. It's the carbs and the processed food and the seed oils and all the other stuff. When we talk about autoimmune, what we want to do is we do, we want to find that minimum effective dose. What we got to talk about though is, do we want to start on the extreme end and then work our way back? Or do we want to take a lot longer in the steps in that process and slowly cut one thing out at a time and see what makes a difference? What is kind of your mentality? Do I want to slow roll this and say, okay, here's what I'm eating now. Let's take this out and see if anything changes. Nothing changed. Okay, let's take the next thing out, see if anything changes. Or do we want to go straight to something like lion diet and say, look, for 30 days, you're going to eat beef, salt, and water. Just cut everything out and then see how things go and then slowly reintroduce things back in. So there's kind of two different directions we could take. It depends on kind of where your mind is at. And, and are you okay with doing something drastic or do you want to slow roll into something? Diving right in is going to be a shock to your system. So there's a couple of things that we want to talk about on how to manage that. Then also understanding that the whole idea of the ketogenic diet, the carnivore diet, the lion diet, whatever, is not about ketosis. Ketosis is not the goal. And this is a struggle that I have in this space because many, most people in the space use the word ketosis incorrectly. Ketosis does not equal fat adaptation. Ketogenic equals fat adaptation. That the diet itself is the diet of fat adaptation. That's what being ketogenic means. Ketosis, the definition of ketosis is you have excess ketones in your blood above normal. So when you're reading a 3.5 or 5.0 of ketones, when you do a blood, when you do a ketone test, that's ketosis because that's above normal, right? That's not necessarily what we're shooting for. What we're shooting for is our body to be utilizing ketones, which if our body's good at being ketogenic, our ketones will actually be low and we may not always be in ketosis. It's like high blood sugar, right? It's just if ketones are just another fuel. So if we have a high blood sugar and that's bad, then why do we want high ketones? It's fuel that our body's not using. When you're first getting started, so th there's not usually, when you're first getting started, it can be helpful in that transition. So there is a time, maybe um, four to eight weeks where taking them can help in the transition process. So that's, that, so if you want to do that, then that's a, you know, have a blast doing that, see how that works for you. But in general, when you're trying to just maintain a lifestyle, focusing on ketosis, doing ketone tests, worrying about that kind of stuff, complete waste of time. Um, the other piece is what is your current electrolyte or sodium intake? Eating carbs, transition to burning fat, get the nutrition, not main, not lose or not worry about maintaining any hormones or lean mass. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com. So like right now I'm doing a 40 day lion diet, which is literally just beef, salt, and water. I feel great. I used to do any kind of meat, seafood, butter, eggs, the 40 days that we're doing it, I'm cutting out coffee. I'm cutting out butter. I'm cutting out eggs. I'm cutting out protein powder. I used to do beef protein powder. So those are the things I'm cutting out for the next 40 days. And it's not fun. Um, those are definitely things that I liked having. And it feels like there's less variety, but the more I do it, the longer I get into this, I'm figuring out different ways to make the meat, right? Different ways to cook the meat is starting to become a little bit more normal and not as much of a change because of the things that I've taken out. And for me particularly, I am noticing some 
some body composition changes. So I hover, I hover between 10 and 11%. And I haven't gotten on a scale yet this week, but I'm pretty sure if I got on there now, I'd be on the low end of 10 or the high end of nine, like definitely dropping. I can see visually there's some changes. So after 40 days, I'm going to be a little scared at what I look like. It's going to be kind of cool. And then there's what I call the third, which is being keto optimized, which is where gluconeogenesis actually utilizes the byproducts of ketogenesis to generate glucogen or glycogen to replenish your glycogen source and provide glycogen for fuel. That's so true. there's three levels. And the third level, when your body starts producing its own glycogen, that's when shit just takes off. For me, my my issues were mostly IBS and urgent bowels and things like that. So it probably, I was probably resolved with all those issues within the first month. I didn't really notice it until a few months later because it was because I had built my life and my routine and just everything about my life was based on where was the bathroom, where was I going, all of that stuff. And it was just so ingrained in how I lived every day. It was like three months before I realized, wait, I haven't had an urgent bowel movement in forever. So I went 30 paleo for a while, pretty much didn't have any, I mean, I wasn't eating processed foods already. I did a sugar detox once, but I didn't have anything really sugar to detox. So I just detoxed alcohol. So I stopped drinking alcohol for 21 days. That's what really got me going, what the F? Because 21 days of no alcohol, I lost 10 pounds of body fat on an in-body scan. So I didn't lose any lean mass. I lost literally 10 pounds of body fat mass after 21 days of no alcohol. And that's what made me go, wait a second. What I put in my mouth makes a difference. It never had clicked, never had clicked before. And then it was shortly after that where I was introduced to carnivore. And was like, this is crazy. Let me give it a shot though. What the hell? Why not? And I haven't, I'm not going back. Like I said, it's been five years. You're, if you're somebody who's trying to fix your gut, fix some autoimmune, increase your testosterone, do that kind of stuff, which going carnivore absolutely should do all of those things. Adding in a shake, you may not see the full benefit of going completely carnivore. You may want to go carnivore, then try adding a shake and see if you notice any difference. And that's what I like to have people do is just, does it work or does it not? Is it helping me? Is it hurting me? Am I seeing progress? Is it stalling me? Whatever. And then they can determine from themselves what they want to do, but there's nothing inherently bad. with it. Hey there. Did you know that I have a free community on discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community. You can meet other people. You can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.